Okay, welcome back. Last time we went to Pokemon Tower, battled our rival, and then quickly left because we couldn't do anything else there. Then we made our way to Saladon City. We managed to catch ourselves a Growlithe. We caught a Dodo. We went and picked up that Eevee, which had been randomized to a Pikachu. And then we went and we challenged the Saladon City Gym. Now, before I go and do anything else today, I want to uh, quickly shuffle the party around. And by that, I'm and by that, I mean Tilia is going directly to the front of the party for now. Also, uh, my level cap has now jumped up quite a lot from the last episode. Basically, uh, my, uh, whatchamacallit, my level cap, that's the word I was looking for, my level cap before I defeated Erika was 28. Now, the thing with Gen 1 is Koga and Sabrina are the same level, basically. You can fight them in any order. And their aces are both level 43, because I'm still a little ways off from fighting them. So, for now, I have a... So now, I, I feel like I have quite a lot of leeway with my level cap. And honestly, I am feeling very confident and comfortable about that, to be totally honest. So, uh, yeah, that's where I'm currently sitting with it. And hopefully Tilia can just tear through this entire rocket hideout by herself. I mean, obviously I have the rest of the team there if need be. The team rocket hideout might be discovered. I better tell the boss. So he just walked through that wall. Oh, but uh, hey, a switch behind the poster. Let's push it. Okay, so off we go into the rocket hideout. Also, turn, turn, absolutely iconic piece of music here. I also want to shuffle this around. Because, uh, yeah, I want to just have Earthquake in the number one move slot, because of course, because of course I do. Also, uh, as I learned, Sparky's potential moveset is insane, <laughs> um, because it gets access to so many TMs, it's just going to be super good. You've broken the Team Rocket's operation? What a nerve! I mean, hey, like, I mean, I could have gone my entire life. Look, if you guys didn't have the Sylph Scope, I wouldn't be here, you know? So I'm just also just going to primarily be using Slash here. I'm mostly going to be using Slash primarily just because it has more PP. And basically, I and I feel like if something is dangerous and I need it gone, like if something is dangerous and I need it gone, then I'll, qu then I'll click Earthquake. Or if I think it'll just take less, or if I think it might take a hit as that Raticate proved because it took one Slash last time. I mean, I say that, but at the same time, at the same time, Slash seems to ha Okay, hang on, what's the same? An escape rope, okay. Yeah, like, Slash has such high PP and it supposedly has a high crit chance, but honestly, I feel like I'm never getting crits with it. Maybe I just have bad luck. Who are you? how do you get in here? I mean, I got in here through the one entrance? So, uh, that kind of tells me how I got in here. Oh, also, uh, we also learned that the Rocket Game Corner sells Pokemon, and, and uh, what would normally be the Abra has now has been replaced, and uh, basically the Abra that you can buy from the, whatchamacallit, from the Game Corner, was replaced with a Vaporeon. So, uh, yeah, I now have a Vaporeon. It's not on the team. It's not on the team, it's just currently sat in the box, but I do have a Vaporeon just kind of ready to go if I ever need it, which could come in very handy. To be totally honest, I, like, I'm like i feeling pretty happy with the Pokemon I have in my boxes. Like I've got some really solid options available. Blast it! You're dissing Team Rocket, aren't you? Not, not really, no. Like, I'm sure... Look, like, I'm sure that there's probably a rapper somewhere in the Kanto region who could probably be put out an absolutely scathing Team Rocket diss track. But I'm not that guy. I I am not I'm not a rapper. Boss said he could see ghosts with the self with the self scope. I mean, he ain't wrong. He is not incorrect. And well, I think there is a good reason as to why they want the ghosts. But I'll explain. Eh, well, I'll explain more about that as we go through the game. Um, and we actually get there. For now, basically, Tilia is going to slash through this guy's five Pokemon like they're nothing. 
to be totally honest, I think I was probably supposed to do the Rocket Hideout before the Celadon Gym. Because these guys are kind of comically weak. I'm just kind of... I'm kind of just, like, ripping through them like they're nothing. Oh, uh, hang on. Hold on. This one's putting up a fight. Let's just use Poison Stink and conserve a little bit of PP. And, of course, I need to hit him again, but that's okay as long as I don't get poisoned. No poison. Let's go. Thank you. Now, okay, I don't think that... Like, I know that there isn't a reason for this, but I feel like my Sand Slash is just a lot less likely to get poisoned than most of my other Pokemon. I don't know why. Maybe it's because it can poison stuff, but I don't know, it just feels like it never actually gets poisoned, despite the fact that I put it up against so many poison types. Now, Slash should finish off this racket. No, okay, that's not exactly ideal, but Poison Sting should be enough now. Fantastic. Now, I should also probably actually give Tilia a bit of focus when I get to the uh, Fuchsia City Gym. However, that is not for a little while. And also, I do need to come back through there later, so I'll leave that little section just for now. Uh... I think that's also why I come out later, but I'm gonna, just going to fight this guy now. We got word from upstairs that you are coming. Okay, fair buddy. Uh, you can have had pre-warning. Did does that mean you brought stronger Pokemon? No. Still, still just like low level twenties. Okay, buddy, I got you. Slash doesn't quite one shot. Focus energy comes through. Focus energy could potentially, you know, be a little bit dangerous because crits are. Because crits are generally quite dangerous. Seismic Tars, that's fine. The absolutely iconic uh, synergy between Focus Energy and Seismic Tars. You know, increase your crit chance and then do a move that does set damage. To be totally honest, I think, I think it would be interesting if a move like Seismic Tars could crit. Like, if Seismic Tars could crit and just do double damage, I think that would actually kind of work. I think that could be interesting. Also, I feel like I probably should switch to someone else now. Because Tilia is starting to run out of PP, but at the same time, I do have those Earthquakes ready to go. But at the same time, I am definitely keeping a hold of those for Giovanni. Go ahead and go, but you can't run the elevator without the lift key. Good to know. TM21, Trick. Uh, that's kind of nothing. Trick kind of just flips uh, held items. And, well... Pokemon, well, trainers, Pokemon in this game, don't really have held items, so yeah, that's ultimately kind of pointless to me, but hey, we have, have the option now, so I guess that's not too bad. Now, I'm going to put, ah, I'll put Shao out front. Actually, no, I'll put, eh, no, Sparky has, again, Sparky has, like, all of the water routes. Like, Sparky will just be tearing water roots apart at with Thunderbolt, so I'm pretty okay about that. And also, there's a whole bunch of bird keepers on one of the later routes, so I don't feel too bad about letting it kind of sit back just for now. You know, I just joined the team last episode, but you know what? It, it did pretty good work in the gym. I mean, I say that Gerudo was the star of the show in the gym. Obviously, I kind of made it as such, just because Gerudo was... Honestly, if, if Gerudo was going to have one moment to shine, it was going to be there. Now, Headbutt comes through from Drowsy. Why it didn't... Why it did not click Confusion? I don't know. Does it even have it at this level? I feel like it probably should. If anything, it probably should learn, like, Psybeam or something by now. Or at least close to it. Anyway, what's his last Pokemon? It is Eraticate. So let's just uh, hit him with the Double Kick. To be totally honest, Team Rocket always kind of worry me a little bit in Nuzlocke's, mostly because so many of them have Raticates and how many of them just use Hyper Fang. Because Hyper Fang does have high crit chance, and high crit chance is a bit dangerous. Anyway, with that, the Raticate goes down, Xiao goes up to level 28, and we are ready to go. Fantastic. Also, he, that guy did just say oof. Silphscope? Oh, that machine's boss still? It's here somewhere. I like how even Team Rocket don't quite understand what Giovanni's goals are. I think that's a really cool little thing. That kind of adds to the mystique of Giovanni. To be honest, I think Giovanni is super interesting. I know that he's kind of easy- Okay, hang on. 
TM49, that's normally Snatch, and it said that was extra sensory. The elevator doesn't work? Who has the lift key? Uh, my guess would be you, because I've played this game before. And he has... What do you have, buddy? A coughing, of course. Is it... Is this coughing in, like, self-destruct level range, though? That's a real question. Because if it is, I need to worry a bit more. But yeah, I, th I genuinely think Giovanni is a kind of interesting character, but I'll talk more about that when I actually get to fighting him. Because, again, we will be fighting Giovanni in this episode. To be totally honest, this is uh, going a lot faster than I kind of thought it was going to be going, because we're only 10 minutes in and we're most of the way through the rocket hideout. Like, I fully expected this to be- I fully expected this to be, like, the fur- uh, I- the Words. Words. Not even once. I kind of expected this to be the full episode, and I am kind of just tearing through this place. I'll probably get it done in, like, 20. But hey, and I'll probably find some way to stall for time, I suppose, as to bring it up to around half hour. Because, I mean, realistically, I've had a cu uh, with playing Spider-Man, I have had a couple of really short episodes lately. Okay, I'm also going to quickly just run back and heal. I... Maybe I should add that as a rule. Maybe I should add that as a rule for future playthroughs. I think I'll consider it. Uh, for future playthroughs, I might consider adding a rule where it's like, once I enter a dungeon or a gym, I have to stay in until I win. I think that could be an interesting little rule to have. Also, that little bit of whatever yes i can get an encounter there yes i will be coming back for it no i just don't have uh, access to the thing just yet and by that i mean uh, i don't have access to surf yet i can't surf like i don't get access to the good fishing rods just yet i need to beat uh pokemon tower first like i need to wake up for snorlaxes because i think it's the super rod is in I don't remember which is which, but I know there's one on the route down towards Fuchsia City, and then there's one in Fuchsia City itself. Okay, so I want to drop down here, go along here, drop down here, and sorted, run up here, because I want to grab this item. And that is another super potion, fantastic. Now we just loop back around on ourselves, and we are good to go. Gonna be totally honest, I've always really liked these puzzles. Like, they're simple and effective. I've always just been a big fan of them. And I don't think I've been in this room yet. I haven't. Okay. Intruder alert! But yeah, so I don't have access to those yet. And if I surf, depending on if I surf or if I fish, I think I can find Psyduck. I think I can find Grimer. And I want to say I can find Poliwag or Horsey, maybe. Either way, I'd be more than happy with any of those Pokemon. Because that's a potential Golduck, that's a potential Kingdra, and that's a potential Muck. But hey, uh, not gonna lie, I'm more than content with any of them, because I have plenty of access to water types coming up, because, you know, eventually I have all the Surf Roots and everything available. And on top of that, I also have plenty of Poison types available, as evidenced by, you know, my Nidorino, my uh, Bulbasaur, sorry, Ivysaur, my Gloom, um, uh, my Ekans. It's not a poison type, but technically my Sand Slash, because it has access to poison and everything. I mean, realistically, Gen 1 of Pokemon is kind of Poison City. There are so many poison types in Gen 1. Honestly, I am starting to think that I definitely did this out of order. It wasn't really the intention, but... Yeah, it's kind of just ended up happening this way. So I suppose I'm going to get through this a lot easier than I expected to. Well, that's it. That's okay. You know what? I don't mind having one slightly easier time every now and then. Why'd you come here? Because I needed a self-scope because I can't get past... Because uh, I need the self-scope to uh, climb the Pokemon Tower to help Mr. Fuji so I can get the poker flute to wake up the Snorlax so I can get to the next gyms. And also, I don't think the Sylph cooperation, I don't, even if I go to Saffron City, I don't think I can do anything at Sylph Co until uh, I finish the Pokemon Tower. And I can't do Pokemon Tower until I deal with this. Now that I think about it, you know, now that I actually kind of say it all out loud to myself, 
the Team Rocket stuff in Gen 1 is all, like, very rapid fire. Like, you see them in Mount Moon, and then they disappear for a little while, and then they are just rapid fire for most of the rest of their time. Also, Double Kick just coming in clutch here, because it just does nice damage, and I don't have access to another fighting type move just yet. I would love to have a Machop or something. Having a Machop would be really nice. Nice, because honestly, I haven't... Have I ever used a Machamp in a playthrough? I don't think I have. Like, I'm sure I must have used one in Heart Gold, Soul Silver, or Platinum once. But if I have, it's been a very long time, and I would definitely like to use one again. I mean, in, an, in a perfect world, I'd also love to be able to get a Hitmonchan or a Hitmonlee. Okay, maybe not Hitmonchan in Gen 1, because Hitmonchan... Uh, Hitmonchan pre-physical special split is unfortunately just not good. It's bad. Like, it is kinda garbage. Okay, so that is some calcium. Now, uh, if I recall how these guys work, also Brute Root is now starting to actually, like, not be my highest level Pokemon. Well, that's fine. I know you. You ruined our plans at Mount Moon. Okay, buddy. Uh, hi, how have you been? Bad? I hope so, because, you know, you're doing crime. Okay, you know what? Because I think these guys, I think one of them has two Sand Shrews and a Sand Slash, and the other has two Ekansas and a Narbark. I'm going to let Brute Root handle this guy, and then Tilia can handle the other one. So, basically, we are just going to click Raise Our Leaf until we win. Because this will just one-shot all of their Pokémon, because, obviously, uh, they are not exactly the bulkiest things when it comes to their special defensive stat. There's a Sand Slash, it's only level 23, my one is a higher level, and I think Brute Root would probably one-shot Tilia with a... Never mind! Okay. I mean, it did... It lived on next to nothing, so we just kind of, you know, nudge it with tackle. That's not even a tackle, that's just kind of like a light, kind of just like, shrug. It kind of just, it kind of just like, sh uh, it kind of just like shoulder checked it and it went down, I suppose. Oh wait, this guy actually did have an Ekans. Uh, maybe the other guy has an Ekans, an Arbok, and a Sand Shrewfer. Either way, this Ekans wouldn't be too much of a problem. Razor Leaf did a lot less than I would have liked, but that's totally fine. Uh, for my own convenience, though, let's just switch out to Tilia and handle it this way. You know, now that I think, now that, like, I, I haven't mentioned it previously in this playthrough, I really like this back sprite for uh, Sand Slash. It looks so cool. I mean, I know that I've said, I know that uh, anyone who anyone who watched me play Pokemon Colosseum. You probably heard me multiple times say I love Sand Slash. Yeah, it's great. I'm a big fan. How can you not see the beauty of our evil? You know what, buddy? You're onto something there. Like, you know what? Like, look. Yeah, they're doing crimes. That's all I got. <laughs> Just like, yeah, they're doing crimes. <laughs> and I think that's something... I think that's just something I find very funny about... about just about uh, villains and things, where it's like, yeah, I'm doing, it's like, yeah, I'm doing evil stuff. Why? Because I want to. <laughs> like, um, I mentioned it in the play, I mentioned it in the Spider-Man playthrough that I'd, and I was just saying earlier in the episode how Otilia never got poisoned. Man, that's unfortunate. But yeah, um, I mentioned it in the playthrough of Spider-Man. And when I was fighting the Rhino, because in the Amazing Spider-Man 2 movie, he, like, the Rhino turns up in that, and that guy just is so excited and happy to be doing crime. Like, I don't know, I've, like, I've just, I always just found that so funny. It's like, oh, this, this man just loves doing crime. Like, like, this man's greatest joy is just doing crime. And there's something so funny about that. That bite did very little. Okay, now we're just gonna earthquake and one shot. I will say, I was is thought the patterns that Arbok had looked really cool, and how they are slight, uh, how they're meant to be slightly different depending on the region. I think that's kind of cool. Okay, so let's move on and fight our last guy in here. Boss, I'm so sorry I failed. You have something against Team Rocket? Uh, no, because I don't, 
because uh, I am not a certain rival from Generation 2. Uh, Silver... Now, <laughs> Silver, though, now that's a guy who has a reason to hate Team Rocket. But hey, we'll uh, get to it. We'll get to Silver when we get to Silver. Now, let's go and fight Giovanni, the big man himself. So, I must say, I am impressed you got here. Team Rocket captures Pokemon from around the world. They're important tools for keeping our criminal enterprise going. I'm the leader, Giovanni. For your, for your insolence, you'll feel a world of pain. Also, that reminds me, because I'm recording this episode like directly after the last one. Because, uh, you know, Team Rocket often basically refer to being like the Pokemon Mafia. Uh, uh, I also, like, that basically just reminded me that the last thing they announced at Gamescom was a new Mafia game called Mafia, the old country. And it's like, you know what? I, I might consider possibly thinking about maybe playing that. I know that there's like three other ones that I haven't played, but I don't know. I, don't, I feel like Mafia stories in general are just kind of interesting. Okay, so... Rhyhorn comes in, Razor Leaf goes burr, and just one shot of the Rhyhorn, and in comes his ace, which is a Kangaskhan. Not gonna lie, I think Kangaskhan is really cool. I've never actually used one in a playthrough. Like, there's Pokemon where it's like, I think I've used this before, but I don't remember. I am pretty certain when I say I've never used a Kangaskhan. And that's a shame, because Kangaskhan is really cool. Now, what do I want to do about this? Honestly, I might as well just stick with it. Okay, it's for bite and it's doing next to no damage. I'm going to put it to sleep because I know that this Kangaskhan does carry... Uh, Kangaskhan does carry uh, Mega Punch. That's, that's the move I was thinking of. Which could be potentially dangerous to me. Also, weird that uh, I don't think he has this Kangaskhan in the later battles with him. I might be wrong, but I'm fairly certain that this is the only time you see him have it. Which is kind of a shame. I think it would be kind of cool if he kept it throughout. Also, gonna to be totally honest, I, when I first saw Kangaskhan, I didn't know what type it was going to be. I didn't think it was going to be just a pure normal type, though. Either way, one more Razor Leaf should be good enough to finish off this Kangaskhan. However, if it doesn't, I'm gonna def- if this turn- if it survives this turn, I'm switching out for safety, because I'm on minus two physical defense. Yeah, that is definitely time for me to switch out. Because even though we can probably take a hit, I don't really want to- Like, I know I can probably take the hit, but I don't really want to risk it. Let's just go out to Garuda. Why'd I bother? Why'd I bother? He, he put me at minus two uh, physical defense and then went for a special move. Because for some reason in this game, uh, Dark type is special. Root Root wants to learn Sweet Scent. We're just going to pass up on that because we don't need it at all. And with that, that's Giovanni defeated. What? This can't be! Okay. I see that you raise Pokemon with utmost care. A child like you would never understand what I hope to achieve. I shall step aside this time. I hope we meet again. And with that, we get the self scope. To be honest, I think it's kind of interesting how Giovanni is just like, hey, vi vi this kid ain't bad. But I always thought that was kind of interesting. Just like, hey, does Giovanni like eventually grow to appreciate red or what? Either way, uh, I'm going to put Sparky out front now, I think, because Sparky has fallen a little bit behind. And this is the last guy here. You know what? That, that is rather fitting that he referred to us as a little mouse when I'm now leading with Sparky. I mean, I say that, but technically Sandslash is also kind of a mouse. I mean, I know it's... I mean, a shrew is a mouse, isn't it? I think. Either way, uh, I don't think... Oh no, that could hit really hard. Oh no, 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 no. Okay, yeah, Sparky. Okay, Sparky, we are switching you out immediately, little buddy. Okay, so Talia now comes in. Sludge, value like five. Okay, I did six. I'm gonna take more damage from the poison damage than the actual hit. I took way more damage from the poison than the actual hit. 
Okay, Slash brings down the Grimer, and I imagine this guy might just have a second Grimer. Maybe a coughing, maybe a rat. Uh, no, it was indeed a coughing. Fantastic. Now, I don't think this is in... I don't think this is in self-destruct levels. But I also don't know what level self-destruct levels are. And that scares me. Because I do not know, and I don't want to find out if I can. Okay, so I have 39, so I have 38 ticks of poison available. I have 38 ticks of poison available on Sand Slash. Uh-oh, that Rook has somehow opened the door. I mean, that's just shenanigans. Okay, I have 19 ticks. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine, ten, eleven. I don't think I can make it. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seven. Okay, we made it, we made it, we made it. Yes! Ten out of ten. Also, uh, I promise I should, I should really stop playing with the poison. I should really stop it. I absolutely should. But with that, I'm actually going to end off today's episode here. Yeah, so I'm going to save and end off of today's episode here. Uh, uh, we managed to take out the entire rocket head out, out today. Next time, we're probably going to be going on a, an over a Pokemon Tower. So I'm going to end off today's episode here. As always, feel free to leave a comment and click any of the buttons down below if you feel so inclined. And I will hopefully see you all on... I think this is a Wednesday episode? I want to say this is a Wednesday episode, so I think the next episode of this should be on Friday. Uh, if not Monday, if, if this is ends if this ends up being a Thursday episode Monday. Anyway, whatever. Okay, thanks for watching. Later. <laughs>